Mom Bello woke with a start from a very fitful sleep. She had a strange dream. Her ancestors had come to her in her sleep to tell her that special visitors would visit their village of Tuvu that day. In the dream, they were examining the bottom of a winnowing basket. Perhaps something spectacular was going to happen to someone in the village. Ma Bello did not know what the dream meant. No one ever knew who the ancestors would visit and what they would do. She stopped wondering and leapt out of bed. If the visitors were to come to her hut, she did not want them to find her unprepared for them. She swept the floor, gathered firewood, washed the pots, and then hung them out to dry. All the time she kept asking herself who the visitors would be and what could they be coming to do in Tulu. While she bustled about, she heard young Chloe singing a lullaby to her crying baby. Like all Batsitsi, the young mother was confined to stay in her hut till her baby was old enough. The baby was crying because he was hungry. The mother and child were always hungry. Ma Bello knew that Chloe's husband left them every morning to go and get drunk in the village. He did not care about them, nor did he give them enough to eat. Ma Bello shared whatever she had with her neighbors. She knew that the mother and child would have starved without her help. Ma Bello stopped for a second. Should she make porridge for them now, or should she prepare herself for the mysterious visitors? She decided to continue working. There was no time. Chloe and her child would have to wait until the mysterious guest had departed. Poor hungry Chloe, poor hungry child, what could she do? Would they get anything to eat that day? She began to cry. She hated being hungry all the time. She did not want to stay in this hut anymore. She could no longer stand to live a life of hunger and starvation, nor listen to her baby howl every day. She was tired of being alone, angry with her husband who got drunk day after day. She looked out of her lapa. There had to be a way to sneak out of the compound without anyone seeing her. She shook her head as she realized that she could not go anywhere. She had to stay in her hut till the traditional confinement period had ended. How she wished her mother and father were still alive. If she had parents, life would be different. She could leave this miserable life and go and live with them. She and her baby would be healthy. She missed her parents so much. Then suddenly, she stood still. A strange sensation started to creep slowly through her. She heard a rustle. Her baby instantly stopped crying. Someone had come into her lava. She looked around the compound in a panic. She felt eyes watching her, yet she saw no one. There was no one. Out of the corner of her eye, she saw something move. It was the lasalo. The flat windwing basket rolled like a wheel. It was as if someone was moving it. It spun gently towards her and landed at her feet. Chloe slowly approached the basket. Puzzled, she picked it up and turned it over. Her eyes flashed back to where it had rolled. There was still no one there. She felt the eyes still watching her. She looked at the lacelo one more time. Who was the basket trying to tell her? Who was in the lapa with her? What did they want? She shuddered in fear. She closed her eyes to try and calm herself down. She mouthed a silent prayer for the ancestors to protect her and her baby. As she prayed, she heard a very faint voice. It seemed to come from a very far away place. The voice helped her to calm down. She was no longer afraid. The voice urged her to use the lesselo to flee. Now she began
began to understand what was happening. The eyes and the voice were those of her ancestors. They had come to help her. The basket was going to help her escape from her life of hunger. She flung the basket down, then quickly gathered her most precious possessions. She took the two mese that she and her son slept on, and then laid the sleeping mats next to the leselo. She took the kikin and the mutsi and placed the pestle and mortar close to the mesemi. There was no time to gather her other household items. She had to do everything quickly, before her husband came back, before Ma Belo came to visit, before she changed her mind. She had to go. She was ready to go. Life was going to be different. It was time to start a new life. Everything was now ready. Chloe put her foot on the lacelo and started to cry once again. She cried not because she was hungry, not because she was afraid, and not because she was alone. She cried because she knew it was time to leave her old life behind. She was going to miss the sound of singing in the evenings. She would never again sit around her fire at night and feel its warmth on her face. Above all, she would miss her dear friend, Ma Bella. She looked around her lava one more time. It would be her last day in her home. Her body slowly began to change, bit by bit. Her legs started stretching. They widened to the size of large tree trunks and became hind legs. The bones on her back expanded towards her bent head. Then she and her baby merged to become one giant body. The two mesedi were gradually growing into oversized ears. Her arms <coughs> slowly merged with the kika and developed into front legs. Her face started changing. It was ballooning into a massive head. The beautiful long eyelashes grew longer and thicker. Lastly, the mutsi changed into a long, strong, gray trunk. Chloe inspected her new body in shock. She had changed form completely. Her husband would not recognize her. She could now leave the village. No one could stop her. She would never go hungry again. At that thought, she rejoiced. Gratefully, she slumped down in appreciation to say another silent prayer to her ancestors. She shook herself and stepped out of her lava. As she lumbered out into the sunshine, she stopped dead in her tracks. The whole village had gathered outside. Men were waiting, weapons raised, prepared to kill her. This was the strangest animal they had ever seen. They noted how this giant of an animal had very quiet footsteps. The only sound of the gigantic feet was that of the broken lava. Chloe quietly looked at the army of people staring at her. She felt very unsafe, so she kept very still. Even though she was now a five-ton elephant, deep down she was still a person. She had always been quiet and gentle. All this noise and attention was confusing her. She began to cry. This sensitivity alarmed the villagers. It was the largest mammal they had ever seen. It could easily kill any one of them. For its size, it should be able to go anywhere it pleased without any fear. Yet it just stood there and cried. The villagers stood staring in amazement. This was indeed a very special animal. The crowd burst into a loud discussion as to what to do with Chloe. Then a clear voice broke through the noise. Nidishiri Kando! Everyone turned their heads. The Seye greeting was repeated. Nidishiri Kando! Ma Bello emerged out of the crowd and walked towards the animal. They all lowered their weapons and parted to let her through. She crept towards the elephant gently clapping 
her cupped hands as a sign of respect. When she reached Chloe, she dropped to her knees, mumbling words of thanks and praise in Sa'im. She too was unsure what this large creature was. Could this be the special visitor the ancestors had told her about in her dream? Or was it one of the ancestors in animal form? Of course, she did not recognize Chloe at all. Chloe gently pulled Ma Bello to her feet to try and explain what had happened. To her surprise, only soft bellows and rumbles came from her. She had lost her human voice. Ma Bello looked at the face of this strange animal that was trying to tell her something. The sad eyes and the long eyelashes looked familiar. She looked closer and recognized the face of Chloe. All of a sudden, it became clear what had happened. The animal was not the visitor the ancestors had told her about. It was none other than the young, hungry mother, Chloe. The ancestors had come to Tubu, and they had undoubtedly visited Chloe. She realized that it would not be safe for her friend to stay in the village. She would have to lead Chloe to the wild. Ma Bello walked, dashed back to her hut and brought out a digging stick and a spear. She took Chloe by one of her large ears and slowly led her out of the village. The villagers let the pair walk away. Everyone now understood that this animal was the work of the ancestors. However, they still did not know that it had once been a mother and child. As the two walked to the outskirts of the village, Chloe looked at everything for the last time. She walked slowly, taking comfort from the presence of Ma Bela. She knew that soon she would be all alone. When they reached the edge of the forest, they stopped. It was time to say goodbye. They held on to each other, weeping softly. Ma Bela took out her gifts. Chloe could not carry them, so Ma Bello put the digging stick on one side of the mouth and the spear on the other. Chloe could use them for digging for food or she could use them to defend herself in times of danger. More importantly, she would keep them to remember that once upon a time, she had been a human being. Most importantly, the gifts would remind her of Ma Bello, her one true friend. The two then sang to the ancestors. They thanked them for saving Chloe. They implored the ancestors to guide her in her new life, protect her from danger, and give her a long, peaceful life. As they sang, the digging stick and spear were slowly turned into beautiful ivory tusks. Now Chloe would never lose them. Ma Bello inspected each one. They were sharp and solid. She turned to Chloe and said, you will be the queen of your kind. Through you, all the knowledge and wisdom about human and animal life will be passed on. Tell this to all that will come after you. Let them know that you and your kin are first cousins of human beings. Treat all the humans you will encounter with the same quiet dignity you have always carried. Remember, always, that we were and are one thing. Finally, respect the wild and everything in it. Look after it, and it will look after you. May the ancestors never turn their backs on you. May they lead you to many days in the wilderness. She then lightly sprayed Chloe's face with saliva for blessings and good luck. Ma Bello looked at Chloe one more time and walked back to the village. Chloe wailed like a trumpet. She did not want her only friend to go, yet Ma Bello walked on with her head down. She then noticed something very peculiar in the sand. Chloe's footsteps looked exactly like the bottom of a lay sailor. Ma Bello did not understand why the ancestors had been examining 
the Lucelo in her dream until now. She finally realized that Chloe had stood on a Lucelo and been transformed into an elephant. When she reached her hut, she shut the door tight and burst into tears. Back in the forest, the birds started chanting again. They sang a song of welcome to Chloe. The wind carried the scent of marula fruit to her trunk. Her stomach rumbled in return. Her new home was welcoming her. She started to step to the beat of the bird song. She was ready for her new life. There would be no more tears, no more hunger, no more sorrow, just a new life filled with excitement and adventure.